Now, journalists are only as good as the sources that they have, and how we treat those sources from an ethical standpoint will impact how we get information, the quality of that information, um, and it some of those things are framed uh, within the law and some of those are framed within ethics. So let's take a look at both aspects. Now, journalism is not about espousing our opinion or even espousing what we think is true or false. It's about following this kind of methodology to obtain information, to verify the truth or falsity of that information, um, to, to gather, organize, and then disseminate it. And, and, and this is the core of our objectivity. And framework for this this objectivity comes in the form of source gathering. So the information that we receive comes from sources, not from our own manifestations. And understanding how we work with those sources, when we how we work with uh, the sources, be they uh, animate like people or inanimate like documents, uh, is, is really a key component of the journalistic enterprise. So Ethically speaking and, and you know, philosophically speaking about the science of reporting, we don't add things that don't happen or that someone didn't tell us, a qualified source didn't say, or something that wasn't part of the reality. Our goal is not to deceive the public or sources or editors or anybody else. We have to be transparent about the method that we use to gather information, the motive behind it, where the information came from, who were the people that provided it, what was the motivation that those people had or those sources had to provide us with information. We do our own work. We make sure that we do our own reporting and we don't take information from other people and use it as our own. And we recognize and acknowledge what we don't know because uh, kind of the motto that we need to follow in life is we don't know what we don't know. So our job is to find out. Now, when we think about sources in journalism, I mean, for those of us who do reporting, um, you know, so the sources that we use every day are just people out in the world who have expertise in whatever topic that we're reporting on. But some of the real ethical considerations that come in are on a different level than maybe everyday reporting would come in, one of them being anonymous sources. Um, you know, it's something that, that lots of reporters uh, think they would like to use. I've had many students who've said, oh, I have this source and they don't want to go on the record or they, they don't want me to use their name. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really work like that unless we have some really extenuating circumstances. We're not going to use anonymous sources. It's an absolute last resort. And without the information that we have uh, from this anonymous source, then we won't be able to get the information out. And it is crucial for the public to have it. That's the only reason that we would do this. Now, there is not a legal protection at this point for journalists uh, to not reveal those sources, and that has caused some pretty significant trials and tribulations. We're going to talk a little bit later in the semester about shield laws, but it's important to understand that even a guarantee made to a source that you won't reveal their name is not actually uh, sustainable all the time when faced with court mandates, and we're going to see what the cases were. Now, now, the picture that I provided you here is Judith Miller from the New York Times. She actually did go to jail for failing to identify the source of information that she received related to a CIA agent whose uh, identity was secret. Uh, her name is Valerie Plame, and uh, she was revealed uh, by Judith Miller's article, uh, and that information was given to Judith Miller by a confidential source. When she refused to identify that source, she was indeed jailed. So... You know, disclosing a source's identity after promising anonymity could also lead to a breach of contract suit, and, and that has been supported in the Supreme Court. So it's not just uh, the fact that you can be compelled by the court to reveal the name of your source. Revealing your name of your source can also be legally challenging. Now, this is a picture of Mark Felt, who is uh, one of the um, most well-known confidential sources that we've ever had. He was deep throat in the Watergate uh, investigation that was done by the Washington Post. Most specifically, he was a source of Bob Woodward's. Now, that information did not come out for uh, for decades, and it was actually Mark Felt himself who released the information, not Bob Woodward. And Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein uh, revealed that information only to the highest editors at the Washington Post. Uh, they kept his identity a secret, uh, but Mark Felt in his later years felt that he wanted that information revealed. He had every right to do so, but Bob Woodward wouldn't do that information, wouldn't reveal that information. Now, the cases that determine uh, about um, 
confidentiality of sources and uh, whether or not you can be compelled to reveal those sources. One of the key one is this uh, Brandsburg versus Hayes from 1971. So um, the story is that Brandsburg was a reporter. He wrote the story about a number of people who were synthesizing and using drugs in Kentucky. Uh, he was called to testify before the grand jury, which was investigating these, these uh, drug crimes, and he refused to testify and identify the sources that provided him with this information. There was another case, uh, Inri Pappas and the U.S. versus Caldwell, um, both had to do with reporters covering activity within the Black Panthers, and they were called to testify and reveal their information. So they all refused to appear before their respective grand juries. So the question before the court was really, is the requirement that news reporters appear and testify before state and federal grand juries an abridgment of freedom of the press as guaranteed by the First Amendment? They said no. Requiring reporters to disclose this confidential information served what they said, and it's a quote, compelling and paramount state interest, and that meant that it did not violate the First Amendment. Um, and even though reporters receive information from sources in confidence, uh, they don't have the right to withhold that from a grand jury any more than uh, a regular person person would. Now, this has prompted the Society of Professional Journalists ever since the Brandsburg case to uh, continue to seek legislation to protect the confidentiality of sources. We are still waiting for that, but uh, very recently we have uh, had the issue of shield laws uh, be revisited, and as I mentioned, we're going to talk about that more in depth a little bit later in the semester. But basically, a shield law would provide additional protection to reporters, and uh, there's some debate as to whether or not such a thing will get passed. And the, one of the biggest debates now, which we'll certainly look at, is what exactly is a Reporter. What what is a news source? What is a publication? Now, another key case in the uh, in the struggle to uh, serve confidential sources is Cohen versus Cal's Media. Uh, Twenty years later, um, and Cohen was a campaign associate in the eighty two gubernatorial race. He gave some records uh, to the St. Paul Pioneer Press, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and he was promised confidentiality. Now, ultimately, though, they identified Cohen in their stories, and he was fired. So he ended up suing them, alleging that it was breach of contract that he had been guaranteed that information would be kept secret and. Uh, uh, it wasn't. So the court had to answer, does the First Amendment bar a plaintiff from recovering damages for a newspaper's breach of promise of confidentiality? And they said no. And and what this uh, indicated, uh, what uh, Justice White wrote in the majority, was that the First Amendment did not bar what's called a promissory estoppel. And that's a promise made from one party to the other. So uh, the fact was that promissory estoppel was applicable here, even though journalists uh, can't be protected from being compelled to reveal their sources when it comes to grand jury testimony if they do make that promise and they do reveal their source. Uh, this case actually allows for uh, action to be taken against them in the courts.